is up guys, it's Jacob here, and in this video we're going to be making a temperature controlled fan uh, controller, if you will, uh, which controls the speed of the fan, or controls when the fan turns on or off, um, via a temperature sensor. So you can actually use that temperature sensor to put it on a heat sink or in some type of an environment where you want to uh, have this, fa this fan uh, actually respond to the temperature change. So. Uh, today we're going to be doing this using a thermistor, so we're going to build a voltage divider thermistor circuit. It's very simple, but um, in another video perhaps we'll look at an actual uh, little TO92 um, temperature sensor package and we can do it with that as well, but for this one we're going to be using a thermistor, so let's get right into it. Alright guys, just real quick, I just want to show you guys how we're going to set this up. So we're going to be using an Arduino Uno for this. Uh, you can use just about any Arduino board. They all work. They all have pulse width modulation. They all have analog input. So it doesn't really matter. Um, and so essentially what we have here is just a simple voltage divider network, right? And so I'm using a 10K thermistor. If you don't know how thermistors work or you don't know anything about thermistors, watch my video on thermistors. Um, this is a negative uh, temperature coefficient device, so an NTC. What up, nerds? I'm Hansi, and today we're making... What's pretty cool about this build is that everything you need is some electronic components, a PVC pipe and a jar from IKEA. Not only is it cheap, but it's already frosted and it has a lid to easily access the inside. The blue Arduino Nano will control the LED lights based on input from this little guy. It works like a sound sensor and it's kinda cool as it outputs a value on both the analog and digital output pin based on the surrounding sounds. To power everything, we need a 5 volt power source. I didn't have that available, so I'm using this voltage step down module with a 12 volt power source instead. Now we're gonna solder a wire to the voltage in and ground pin on the Arduino. If you've been working with Arduinos before, you've probably seen this a thousand times already. But if you haven't, this is how we can power it with an external power source. We're using female to male header pins to connect the sound detector's ground and voltage input. To make it a little less messy, we can join the Arduino and the sound module wires together, and then add some shrinking tube before soldering it to the power source. Now we can shrink those tubes, and we can shift our attention back to the Arduino. To get the sound signals, we'll be using an analog pin which will read a value from 0 to 1023 from the analog output on the sound detector module. The last thing we need from the Arduino is a way to control our LED lights. We're gonna use some individually addressable LEDs, which can all be controlled from 